Good morning, folks. We're going to review the space weather information relevant for the coming days. We'll take a look at a fascinating story about Stonehenge, and we'll check out a paper on magnetic pole shifts, geomagnetic excursions. But we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find it was a much quieter day. If you recall, yesterday we had to hit two M-class flares and an X-class flare. No such fireworks today. However, if you caught last night's video, you know that the last flare, the X-Class event, produced a faint halo signature CME on Soho Lasco coronagraphs, and it is likely heading for Earth. NASA's Enlil Spiral has it impacting either Friday night or Saturday, while NOAA's shows it coming much more slowly, sometime on Sunday. We'll be watching this weekend, but either way, a low-level geomagnetic storm is all that is likely from this event. We'll keep watching the sunspots, however. We do have that big one on the north, and in addition to having some generally flare-inducing magnetic polarity, it has a reverse patch within the massive umbra, red in the dead center of the blue showing a magnetic reversal core to that umbra. In the days ahead, we'll also need to keep an eye on the incoming limb on the south as a major sunspot is about to return into view. We've got eyes on all of it. First article today is with Stonehenge. If you didn't hear the big news yesterday, one of the main stones of the structure was actually cut and carried 800 kilometers southward from Scotland. It's another nod to how incredible the ancients were, not only in building, but in the transport of extremely heavy objects. We really just have no idea what they knew how to do back then. We also have a fantastic article here on recent geomagnetic excursion events. The goal was to identify what has happened since the Gothenburg excursion event 12,000 years ago. The main finding was about what we have called the NOAA event about 6,000 years ago, which some scientists call the Tianqi event, but here they're calling the Solovki event. Interestingly, immediately following that event was a frozen period of the peat used in the study, probably warrants a bit closer examination in the days ahead. Either way, third column is showing the magnetic field strength declining again now as we head into the next magnetic pole shift. Don't forget, later today, we're going to be sending out the latest issue of Observer Review. It's a great time to sign up if you haven't yet, as it is not only the best way to support the observers and the best way to keep up to date on the most relevant science every month, but here, we're not just sending out the August issue. You'll get the entire summer's worth of issues all in one, June, July, and August. Link is below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.